talked earlier about dignity of all humans, and right yes. there it sounds like once you've committed a crime, your dignity is This gone. is a great question. So when should dignity be removed? I would argue never. So, okay, let me ask you a question. So Ted Kaczynski, Eric Rudolph, and Timothy McVeigh, three people that randomly bombed American society, the Unabomber, the Centennial Park bomber, and the guy that bombed the Oklahoma City bomber, you should never take their dignity away? Yeah, humans, as you said earlier, that like once we start defining why you should take dignity away, dignity we start well, how about like murdering cold. people? Okay, there's a difference between allowing people to live in society and taking away their dignity. Right, so like Ted Kaczynski, agree on that? Unabomber, should he not be in jail? I'm not saying he shouldn't be in jail. No. I'm saying that the rhetoric we use towards people shows whether we give them dignity and see dignity. Right, like them. Ted Kaczynski was given dignity when he was a professor until he started mailing packages around the, the country and started killing random children. Then it's like, okay, you're going to jail for the rest of your life. That's a good use of power. So, that, Charlie, when should people stop giving you dignity if you're going to have lines Because I'm others? not the Unabomber. Right? Yeah, fair point. And do you understand what I'm saying of like, no. if we, okay, cool. If we claim that dignity is inalienable human right or given by God. Rights could be taken away. Okay, is, if and dignity should, is given by God, murderer, can it be taken away by man? Again. Say that again, I didn't hear what you said. If dignity is given by God, can it be taken away by man? It can be taken away by the state if you make a decision to infringe on the life, liberty, or property of another. Therefore, an emphasis on what? Human action. So, for example, when someone goes and shoots up a school or a church like Dylan Roof, he all of a sudden has violated the social contract and social compact of life, liberty, and property of another. Therefore, we absolutely have a moral right and prerogative. In fact, we have a moral obligation to say that he should not be able to live in free society alongside of us. Abs absolutely agree. Okay. That's not what I'm trying to say. What I'm trying to say is that we should still treat these humans with dignity, even when they are not allowed to be a part of society. I mean, again, you're not going to convince me that Dylan Roof or the Unabomber are in some sort of vast need after they decided to take the life of innocent people. Is, is that the argument? They made a decision to take the life of another. At that point, the social contract has been violated, and we should, in fact, we have to use state power to take them out of the free and decent society. I'm still not agree disagreeing with that. So what I'm disagreeing with is how we use rhetoric in our thought patterns to view other humans, and we start to objectify them. This we, is a good question. Like, uh, okay. going to, can I... I yeah. understand where you're getting, but let me ask you a question. Oh, can, can I just finish real quick? Yeah, fine. Um, just like Nishek, uh, not Nietzsche? that I agree with everything. Nietzsche? Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm really bad yeah, with it's okay. So which book are you quoting that you learned in your intro to philosophy? Uh, it's just 101? the famous quote. Yeah, Beyond Good yep. and Evil, you know, which one is it? Beware when fighting monsters, for you yourself become Beyond a monster. When you gaze into the abyss, the abyss gaze back. And I hear a lot of rhetoric of tribalism. I hear a lot of undignifying of humans and objectifying of humans because of the wrongs that they've committed, which is, yeah, like, I agree, they committed wrongs. And, like, how do we get beyond this tribalism, get beyond this undignifying of humans from what they do? How about this? Stop committing crimes and start improving your own character and your conduct, and then all of a sudden I think society will start to figure it out. I, I guess my question is this, which is you're worried about thought patterns and speech patterns. We right now in our country have thousands of people that have committed first-degree murder. They decided to take the dignity and the life of another human being. Excuse me while I don't dedicate parts of my speech for people that decided to kill people in cold blood. This is Charlie Kirk, founder and CEO of Turning Point USA. If you liked this video, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel at Turning Point USA.